Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hounds and for this video I'm going to go through all the Blu-rays and DVDs that I picked up in the month of July. So the first one up, um, just got this in yesterday actually, is An American Haunting, which I've not seen before. Looks like pretty creepy stuff, so I'll be interested to check this one out. It's got a good cast. Uh, Donald Sutherland and Sissy Spacek in the two leading roles, which I thought was pretty cool. So I look forward to seeing them in, in this movie. So yeah, first one up is An American Haunting. Seen that one a while, seen that one around for a long time, but never picked it up until now. Uh, next up from, I think this is Retro Media, this is Angel Eyes, which is a, a blind buy for me. I've not come across this movie before. Again, interested in checking this one out. This has uh, got, it's directed by um, Gary Graver, who was a long-time cinematographer for Orson Welles. So, uh, interesting uh, filmmaking link with this one. Uh, I, I, I doubt this will have any hallmarks of an Orson Welles movie, but you never know. I will, uh, I, I'll save uh, judging it until I, I watch it, but yeah. So yeah, yeah, picked up um, Angel Eyes, so we'll see what that one's like. Okay, next up, uh, I picked up The Awakening, which is a really good movie. And I, I've seen this a couple of times, and for whatever reason, I couldn't remember the name of this film, which is not like me. I, I tend to have a kind of an encyclopedic knowledge of horror films. I don't have many other talents. Um, but I remember horror films quite well. But for whatever reason, this, the name of this film always eluded me. So I could never find it and add it to the collection. And uh, a friend of mine actually looked it up for me and told me what it was. So as soon as I was reminded, I, I, I picked this up. Because this is a really, really good kind of old-fashioned, creepy British ghost story. Uh, this woman, Rebecca Hall, uh, she's like investigating this death or this disappearance in this sort of kid's borstal school um but creepy things start happening but yeah if you like your old-fashioned creepy ghost stories definitely check this one out it's a really good film uh really happy to to finally get the awakening uh in the collection next up uh okay next up i just picked up the slip cover uh for the bees from uh, vinegar syndrome so i already have the movie it's a pretty cool fun killer bee movie uh, so Vinegar Syndrome put out the slipcase, so uh, I just grabbed that for the uh, Blu-ray that I already have. Okay, next up, I picked up Blood in the Water, uh, which as it says on here is like Saw meets Jaws, uh, which is not a combination that I found all that appealing, quite honestly. And um, yeah, this movie isn't great, uh, really not much to see here, um, pretty pretty bad stuff. Um, yeah, people are like chained up around this pool and they've all got like a dark secret and this guy, like a jigsaw character, kind of character, um, is messing with them while there's this shark in this pool, but it's, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, and real lack of shark as well. It's, it, there's hardly any shark action in this film. So yeah, one that I would avoid is Blood in the Water. Okay, next up, I picked up the uh, Bootleg Death Tape Collection. So this is a documentary death compilation thing. Uh, bootleg Death Tape 1 uh, is pretty strong stuff. It all looks to be 100% real footage. Uh, very kind of grainy and, um, and, and uh, sort of um, poor quality footage, which only kind of adds to the mystique of these things. Um, pretty interesting stuff it sounds a bit morbid but i liked how this one was presented uh it had different chapters for like uh different things like car crashes plane crashes firing squads whatever but, but yeah i like how it was presented so bootleg death tape one was pretty strong stuff bootleg death tape two and three was entirely fake footage uh kind of just obviously fake and um just yeah really kind of badly done it was all like wild eye production values that kind of thing so it was a strange leap going from as i say the pretty strong real footage of bootleg death tape one to this obviously fake staged um 
just kind of boring footage of, of two and three. I don't know why they included that, really. It was, yes, a, a strange mix. So if you are into your shockumentary stuff, you only need bootleg death tape one. But, yeah, anyway, good to get that one in the collection. Next up, uh, I picked up Burglar from Hell. I did show this, I think, at the beginning of the month. Not had a chance to watch this yet. Uh, this is some shot on video trash, uh, which I've uh, I've heard is pretty terrible. So, uh, um, based that it's uh, shot on video, it probably is. But uh, I'll give it a whirl at some point and check that one out. Okay, next up, I picked up The Cellar. I think this is a new film. Not had a chance to watch this one yet. I've heard a couple of reviews of this which were pretty positive. So uh, I'll check this one out soon. It's got um, Eliza Cuthbert in this, who I've not seen for a long time. So uh, yeah, good to see that she's still doing movies, I guess. So yeah, I'll check out The Cellar at some point soon. Uh, next up, I picked up Chupa which is, uh, I think, a pretty low-budget film based on, like, the Chupacabra legend. So this Chupacabra monster is going around the woods. Uh, looks like a pretty low-budget affair, but I don't see many Chupacabra-related horror films, so I'm interested to see what they do with this. Uh, I think this is limited to uh, 500 copies, uh, and this one is signed by the director as well. So, yeah, pretty... Uh, Pretty nice release there, um, like I say, pretty limited edition, so if you're interested in that, I'd, I'd get on that sooner rather than later. But yeah, I'll uh, check that one out soon. Next up, I picked up Claw, um, another one I haven't got around to watching yet. I did watch some films this month, but this looks like uh, another kind of low-budget, trashy slasher movie. It's from the same people that released... Uh, the Camp Blood movies, so I uh, have a bit of an idea of what to expect with this one. Uh, this kind of killer wearing a welder's mask and with this implement here going around slashing people up. So, yeah, it looks pretty pretty fun. I'll, uh, I'll watch that one soon and see what it's like. Okay, next up, I picked up Cyst. So I did do a review on this one to let people know what I thought. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a silly film. But I had fun. It had some pretty cool, practical, gooey effects as well. So, yeah, if you want a, a pretty undemanding, fun, silly horror film, check out Cyst. That's pretty cool. Next up, I picked up uh, Dark Encounter. Don't really know much about this one. I think I just snagged this while I was buying up a few other movies. Uh, and it was there. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting cover. Um, looks looks pretty interesting, so uh, yeah, I'll check this one out soon. Uh, next up, I picked up a Deadly Dummy, a killer dummy movie. Uh, pretty terrible stuff, but it was only about 45 minutes long, so uh, it was terrible, but not all that painful to get through. But um, yeah, absolutely nothing to see here with this one. Right, next up from Code Red, I picked up Devil's Express. Uh, this was a really fun film. I really like this one. This was a cool mix of, like, The Warriors meets Deathline by way of Enter the Dragon. So it's like a kung fu horror film uh, with these kind of warring gang factions in, like, New York or something. Very much like The Warriors. They're all kind of fighting. They're all, like... Uh, street gangs, yet they all kind of know martial arts. So lots of uh, fighting in the streets for these gangs. Uh, but at the same time, there's this creature in the subway killing people off, uh, killing gang, gang members off indiscriminately. So uh, this guy, uh, Warhawk Tanzania, I think his name is, which is an, an amazing name, he kind of uh, takes the lead and sort of does some investigating and some fighting and whatever and uh, does battle against this creature in the subway. It's it's played straight, but it's rather kind of unintentionally hilarious at the same time. Uh, it's got a great kind of uh, exploitation grindhouse feel to it as well. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's got a lot of like kind of, I guess you'd call it street language, like sort of like, um, like, hey brother, check out this crazy cat. 
that that kind of thing. But yeah, they do it a lot better than me. But yeah, Devil's Express, really fun film. I don't hear many people talk about this one. So yeah, if you want, uh, I don't know, a good laugh and want to see some cool fighting and creatures, check out Devil's Express. Uh, next up from Vinegar Syndrome, I picked up Dracula Sucks. Uh, so I didn't think I'd enjoy this one. This is like a X-rated uh, parody of the old kind of Dracula movies. And uh, I have to say, I did actually like this one. It was pretty good. So this comes with like a triple X-rated version um, and like a softer version. Uh, I watched the softer version, which funnily enough was longer it was a longer cut, and that one had more of a story and more of the horror elements. And yeah, it was pretty cool. It was alright. It all takes place in this castle. Wasn't too keen on the guy that played Dracula. I don't think he fit the role all that well. Um, but Reggie Nelda was in it, who played Van Helsing. Um, and he was really cool. He's a fascinatingly creepy actor. I always wonder what he was like in real life. But yeah, it was not too bad. It had some kind of gothic... Um, sort of sensibilities in it a few nods to hammer films and some of the kind of uh european cinema so yeah not not as bad as what i thought it would be i did quite enjoy it for what it was uh next up we have some more kind of extreme sort of shockumentary stuff um with dying scenes uh i wanted to check this out because this is a modern shockumentary as well most of the ones i have are from like the 60s 70s or 80s this is a new one um Pretty much entirely, mainly fake uh, scenes in this one. Just kind of real kind of uh, special effects examples and um, sort of people being chopped up. But it's obviously fake stuff. Uh, there's a couple of real things, a few kind of like aviation accidents and aftermaths of crime scenes and things like that. But yeah, pretty um, uh, pr pretty fake, pretty soft stuff for this kind of subgenre. I don't know, if you're curious about getting into this uh, sort of uh, dark subgenre, then this might be a good one to start with. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was, but it's certainly not along the lines of some of these more hardcore shockumentaries. But good to have that one anyway. Okay, next up, I picked up The Earth Dies Screaming, uh, which I mainly got for the title. It's a really uh, outlandish title. Uh, but this is, I think it's early 60s, sort of uh, kind of sci fi with the. Uh, Aliens uh, coming down into this quiet uh, English village and um, not a lot happens. They kind of walk around for a little bit and this handful of survivors, uh, after they've kind of like wiped everyone out, uh, they have to kind of like uh, scurry about and uh, kind of get out of the way and then find a way to defeat them. Uh, this, the, the title of this is really, I think, uh, misleading. Uh, because the Earth Dive Screaming kind of suggests a, a full-on global alien invasion and battle for survival when it's really just this very sleepy film uh, that takes place in this even sleepier, quiet village. Um, but I like it had that sense of early 60s, kind of 50s sci-fi charm. Uh, Dennis Price was in this, who's always kind of uh, fun to watch. So, uh, yeah, a, a lot more underwhelming than what I thought, but the robots in it were really cool, and I did have, have a good time watching it. So, yeah, again, good to get that one for the collection. Uh, next up from Arrow, I picked up Edge of Sanity uh, with Anthony Perkins, um, somewhat doing like a Norman Bates kind of role, but it wasn't as, uh, as, as formulaic as what I thought it would be. This does kind of do its own thing. Uh, it's like a take on uh, Jekyll and Hyde. He's a Jekyll and Hyde scientist and uh, and yeah, mainly follows that plot. He has his alter ego, uh, Mr Hyde, and he goes round. It's uh, Victorian England, uh, which I always think is a fun setting uh, for a horror film. So not not, not great, not, a, not an amazing film, but uh, Anthony Perkins gives a, a pretty decent performance. and I, I did like that setting. Uh, had a couple of cool kills in it as well. So, yeah, it was okay. First time I'd ever seen it, so wasn't too bad. Next up, I picked up a film called Exposure. Uh, this one was pretty interesting. It was very slow. Uh, this couple, they have, like, this failing relationship, and they go in this cabin in the wilderness to try and kind of, I don't know repair their relationship so you kind of already know there's going to be a bit of 
boring romantic subplot, uh, which there was, but when they get there, they kind of there's a strange feeling to the place, and things are not quite right, and it's I think purposefully it's quite slow burn. Uh, the guy he starts to change gradually over the film, and uh, like I say, weird things start to happen. I think he kind of becomes sort of possessed by the surroundings and there's a bit of creature sort of action at the end uh, it, it, it was alright it kind of kept me wondering what was going to happen but like I say it was very slow it's one of these where I think like the monster comes out in the last five minutes and it, that bit is really exhilarating and I kind of wish they'd done that more in the in the, the bulk of the film so yeah if you want to see something kind of more slow burn this is a decent recommendation um, but I did I did wish they kind of would have kicked it into gear uh, a bit sooner. But, yeah, no, not bad. Pretty interesting. I like the scenery in that. <laughs> um, next up, I picked up Ghoul School uh, from the 90s, 1990, I think. Uh, this one was pretty terrible. <laughs> I didn't like this one. Um, no way around it. This was really bad. And I, I wanted to like it, but it just, yeah, was not good. And this DVD, this DVD was not good either. It's really bad quality. It sounded and looked terrible, which didn't really help the film. But yeah, really nothing to recommend in in this one. Wanted to see this one quite for quite a few years, um, but it was awful. So yeah, it happens. But at least I've uh, at least I've seen it now. Uh, next up from Full Moon, I picked up Gore in Venice. Uh, which is a Jallo film, I think from about the 80s. Not seen it, but um, I'll, I'll check this one out soon. Full Moon are releasing quite a few films on Blu-ray, which I'm wanting to see, this being one of them. So, yeah, I'll check that one out soon. Okay, next up from Retro Media. This is, um, this is like a favourite in the world of B-movie films. I hear people talk about this all the time. I've never seen it, so I really wanted to get a copy, um, which I now have, and that's Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. So this, I, I did have fun with this, it was pretty cool, uh, these women just chopping up people and there's limbs and blood flying around in a really unconvincing fashion, and I think they all, they all like work for uh, Gunnar Hansen, and they're all part of like this uh, chainsaw worshipping cult. Um, yeah, pretty crazy. I thought it was okay. I, I didn't, I didn't sort of have as much affinity for this as what other people had. Uh, maybe because I didn't see this when I was younger, like I think a lot of people did. Um, but yeah, it was fun for what it was. It's Fred Olin Ray, who I always, I do like his movies. I more prefer his creature features um, to to this. But um, yeah, it was fun. Uh, I had a laugh watching it. Some cool gore scenes in it, and Gunnar Hansen was pretty cool uh, when he was in it. So, yeah, good to finally check out Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Uh, next up, this is Retro Media as well. I picked up Jacko, uh, which this was, was pretty cool. This is from the 90s. Had very much like a 90s TV feel to it, and I, I think this was a bit of an amalgamation of two or three films um, brought together. I haven't looked into it, but it, it felt that way. But this is um, takes place at Halloween, and there's this uh, Jacko monster going around killing people. Pretty good stuff. It's uh, It drags in a few places, um, but I really liked it for its 90s TV feel. And the, 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 the Jacko creature, was he looked really cool. Uh, I, I did enjoy seeing him on screen. So, yeah, not great, but I, I did enjoy this for what it was. And if you like your sort of your Halloween themed films, which I know a lot of you do, um this is definitely one of those kind of movies. So yeah, that was cool. Uh next up I picked up uh Jester, uh which is absolutely awful, terrible. Uh maybe the worst thing I got this month. Um so yeah. And not not one to recommend. I get this is only about forty, fifty minutes long. Um, but man, does it drag, even with a running time like that. So, yeah, I do not recommend going anywhere near Jester. But I'll put it in the collection. They'll make up the collection. Next up, I picked up Killer Bees, which I've not watched this yet. I just found it cheap. Uh, I think this is an Asian film. I think it's subtitled. 
Um, but yeah, I do like my Killer Bee, Killer Bug movies, so I'll give this one a watch pretty soon. Okay, next up from uh, from Marvel, or Sony, whichever one it is, I picked up Morbius. Now, I have not heard a single good thing about this movie, um, and I watched it. Got to say, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. Now, I am not a Marvel fan. I'm not into Marvel films, not interested in Marvel films. Uh, I'll leave it there. But I did watch it with a friend of mine that's a huge Marvel fan, and we both really enjoyed it, so I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, I don't understand the hate behind this one. I thought this was a really good film. I thought uh, Jared, Jared Leto was really good in it. I thought Matt Smith was fantastic in it. And I love the story, how they had this uh, this affliction and the cure for it sort of turned them into vampires. And I really liked how sort of Jared Leto saw it as a curse, whereas Matt Smith kind of embraced it and became more villainous with it. So that was a really interesting story. And I liked the balance between the two characters. I thought the action scenes were pretty cool. It's Marvel, so you know it's going to be massive over-the-top CGI, but I kind of like what they did. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know why this one is as hated as it is. If you if you really didn't like this movie, let me know why, because I would be interested to know. Uh, but I, I really, really enjoyed it. So it was nice to actually watch it and enjoy it, because I really did think it would be a, a hard one to get through. Next up from uh, 88 Films, I picked up Night of the Demons 2. Never seen this sequel. Uh, I thought it was good. I really enjoyed it. It's a really sort of silly B movie. Um, I was watching it and I was kind of thinking that movies like this now they're they're hard to recommend because everything now kind of has to be sort of perfect and sort of flawlessly made and have lots of great messages and be socially and politically relevant and things like that. Whereas films like this, they were just. They were so silly and predictable, but I, I enjoy them for that reason. But it's yeah, it's hard to know where these kind of sit now in the scheme of movies. But yeah, this was just really simple, uh, silly, um, just kind of gory B-movie with these demons attacking these teenagers. Uh, and that's all I wanted. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good sequel to the first one. So that's Night of the Demons 2. Next up... I picked up Revenge of the Creature, uh, the sequel to Creature from the Black Lagoon. I think this is just a, like a made-on-demand DVD, um, but it's fine for me. I wanted to see it. I've never seen the sequel. Uh, I thought this was really cool as well. So this in this one, they capture the creature, take him to like this uh, um, captivity place, and he's kind of on show to the public in this exhibition thing. And, of course, he breaks out, and uh, a lot of chaos ensues. Uh, yeah, I thought it was good. I didn't like it as much as the first one, and I didn't like that they took away from the lagoon setting, but they kind of needed it for the story. It, it kind of reminded me of a pre precursor to Jaws 3. Kind of the monster gets taken to captivity, gets put on display, breaks out. So yeah, it really kind of reminded me of, of Jaws 3. Uh, and Clint East was in it for about 30 seconds as well, so that was cool. But yeah, it was good to check out the sequel to uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Next up from Retro Media, I picked up Scalps, which is one I wanted to see for a long time. And this is really kind of billed as a pretty strong horror film. It's like one of the most, apparently one of the most censored films of all time. I really can't believe that many people were outraged by this one. It's pretty slow. It's mainly just these teenagers wandering around the desert. And there's a couple of decentish kills towards the end. But nevertheless, apparently this one had a lot of trouble with the censors back in the 80s. I thought it was all right. I, I liked it for the kind of the atmosphere and the look of the film. The the Indian creatures in it were pretty cool as well. But yeah, there is a lot of walking around <laughs> in this one. Um, but again, good to get this because I've known about it for a long time and not been able to get it. So nice to finally add scalps to the collection. But yeah, nothing special, I have to say. Oh, oh this one's got away from me. Sorry guys, next up from Vinegar Syndrome, I picked up Scared to Death, uh, which was a good one, I enjoyed this, pretty fun monster movie, uh, I think these detectives 
are just on the trail of this monster that's going around killing people off. Pretty much as simple as that. Uh, the monster got some pretty decent screen time towards the end and looked pretty cool. I did quite like the characters in this as well. So, yeah, not a bad release here from Vinegar Syndrome and a pretty enjoyable creature feature. So that one was cool. Uh, next up, uh, is this Culture Shock? Yeah, I think this is from Culture Shock. I picked up Slash Dance, um, which was pretty terrible. I don't think I even made it all the way through this. Um, but I, I, I showed this off as part of my Vinegar Syndrome pickup video at the beginning of the month. And I was told by a few of you that it is terrible. And yeah, you guys are right. It wasn't great. So uh, yeah, not one that I would recommend. Uh, won't be returning to this one, but never mind. At least I've seen it now. Okay, next up I got... Now this is an exclusive from Target. This is the um, Stranger Things Season 1 in the kind of battered VHS uh, packaging. I know lots of people are hot on Stranger Things at the moment. It's all I hear of from people, but I'm a little bit behind. I've never really watched it. And uh, got to thank my mum and dad for this. They actually bought me this as a surprise because they've watched the whole thing and are always going on about how good it is. I keep saying I'll get round to watching it. So, yeah, my mum, being awesome, she found this out, managed to get me this. It's not the easiest thing to find. So I can uh, I can watch Stranger Things at some point. But this is really cool. Uh, you take this off and it's literally like a video, a VHS tape that opens up. So, yeah, really, really nice release. So I will jump into Stranger Things at some point. I know I'm horribly behind on that. But yeah, it's a really nice addition. Next up from Kino Lorba, I picked up Tarantulas, The Deadly Cargo. I uh, did a quick review on this. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. It's a TV movie. Uh, so you know, it's always going to be a bit tame, a bit slow. Um, but it's pretty awesome. Lots of real tarantulas uh, walking around on people. So and another one I've not seen. So good to finally get that one for the collection. And then again from Kino Lorba, uh, it's kind of companion film, Terror Out of the Sky, uh, Killer Bee movie. Uh, again, I enjoyed this for what it was, pretty much the same thing as Tarantula's Deadly Cargo. So if you like that, or if you like your killer bug movies or TV movies, uh, I think you'd be alright with uh, Terror Out of the Sky. So yeah, nice to get those two releases as well. Next up from Vinegar Syndrome, I picked up the Thriller box set. Uh, wasn't going to make an order from Vinegar Syndrome at the time, um, but I saw how quick this was selling out. It sold out in less than a day, I think, so I, I knew I had to sort of get on this and, and check it out. I haven't had time to watch it yet. I want to try and watch both versions. Let's start to stand on there. Yeah. I want to try and watch both versions back to back if I can, because I've heard different things about the different versions, so... Uh, yeah, I'll put some time aside at some point to watch them both and, and see what it's like for myself. But, yeah, I'm just glad I was able to get this because, like I say, it did sell out very quick. Uh, and it's a, a very nice kind of thick set as well. So, uh, that's pretty awesome. Right, next up from MVD, I picked up uh, Vampire's Kiss. Again, this is another one I've never seen. Uh, I did enjoy it. This is more like a quirky comedy than any, anything else. It's a very odd film. Uh, with Nicolas Cage, he's like this publicist, uh, and he's already kind of a bit wired, a bit crazy, and he gets bitten by a vampire lady, and it just, it's this vampire curse sends him over the edge, and he's just nuts throughout the whole film. He's very, he's like very Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey-esque. It's a very like Jim Carrey performance from Nicolas Cage. He's just really over the top. But it, it was, it was funny. It had me laughing quite a bit in a few places. So it was a comedy kind of worked um as a horror film i thought it was okay there was the vampire thing was very random like i didn't know who this vampire woman was or where she came from it's never really nothing's kind of really looked at or explored in the film it's just nicholas cage acting very manic for for the duration of the of the film so interesting one strange one i, I liked it I, I don't know i'm still yeah i don't know how much i liked it but um, but yeah, I've never seen it before. So again, good to finally check that one out. Another one I've not seen before and I've known about for a long time. 
So I just picked up a cheap DVD copy of uh, Warlock, uh, with Julian Sands as like the son of the devil, and he goes from like medieval times and transports to modern day uh, New York or somewhere, or 80s New York, and he's got Richard E. Grant going after him. He's like a witch finder guy uh, that travels across time to, 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 to get him. Uh, yeah, this was a fun film, uh, pretty enjoyable. Uh, I liked it for, for what it was, and Julian, Julian Sands was pretty captivating as well. So yeah, I did enjoy Warlock. Uh, yeah, that was all right. Uh, and then the last film, uh, another shockumentary, I picked up The Worst of Faces of Dying. Uh, so Faces of Dying was like a Faces of Death style uh, shockumentary. Uh, apparently this is a compilation of all the, the worst uh, uh, scenes from that series, so we'll see what it's like. I've not had a chance to check this one out yet. Um, got a few shockumentaries this month, and there's only so many I can handle at one time. Um, but the artwork on this is awesome. I absolutely love that artwork. It's pretty, pretty cool looking uh, school creature on there. So uh, yeah, I'll check this one out at some point and see what it's like. So that's everything that I got this month, guys. Uh, as always, let me know what you think. If there's any films here that you liked or don't like, let me know. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.